Hey everybody, welcome to week 10 uh, waiver wire selections. If you're new to the program, here's what I do. I give you three uh, weekly stream plays at every single position. I also give you three long-term plays. So if you need somebody to fill in for a bye week or an injury, I have you covered. If you're looking for depth to make a late season run or get into the playoffs, I have you covered as well. If you're in a dynasty league, I have you covered. Uh, before we get rolling here, um, and we will go quarterback to defense to tight end to wide receiver and end the video on the uh, the running backs. Before we get started, please, two seconds of your time for two clicks, a like and a subscribe. As I always say, um, you know, we really need that subscribe. It's a little bit of effort for you. It's a big deal for for us. Uh, we have some production features that are currently locked for us. We need more subscribers. We need more watches, and uh, you can help us do that. But let's dig in right now for the quarterbacks. The week 10 plays. If you need somebody to start this week, here are the matchups I like. And I uh, I use the word like with some trepidation here. Jameis Winston, he's so up and so down, um, but this week is a really nice matchup for him against the Arizona Cardinals, only owned in 65% of the leagues. Uh, so if you need a quarterback, if you have somebody on bye week this week, I think you can uh, you can plug him in this week. You're probably going to get some inter interceptions because you always do. But remember, Bruce Arians, he knows um, you know these, uh, these Arizona Cardinals uh, personnel fairly well. I know there are new schemes in there, but I just think that Jameis Winston should be in a position to succeed when he has played the NFC West so far this year. He has done well. Philip Rivers versus Oakland. Oakland's secondary is a little bit of an issue right now. Uh, Philip Rivers, uh, you know, between Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, I think they'll be okay. Austin Eckler receiving out of the backfield, I think he'll be okay too. Owned in 60.3% of the league, so I think he uh, has a good shot at being out there for you. And lastly, Jimmy Garoppolo. This is more of a, my analytics don't love him this week um, against the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football, but I gotta say, ever since Emmanuel Sanders has gotten there, it looks pretty good. I like the projections for the wide receivers this week. I think Garoppolo is going to step it up. I still think the running game is going to be strong, and this offense runs through the run game. But Garoppolo to Sanders, I believe in that connection. So only owned in 33.6% of the leagues. I like the uh, the prospects there. For long-term plays for quarterbacks, um, Garoppolo makes a repeat performance on this list here at 33% again owned. Uh, Kirk Cousins I still love. I don't love him in the matchup this week for uh, against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, but I think season long he's somebody that should be on everybody's, you know, on every league's roster. I'm surprised that he's not at this point. And then Derek Carr, um, you know, similar to Garoppolo with Emmanuel Sanders in the lineup, Derek Carr is a little bit different when Tyrell Williams is in the lineup. And since he's returned a couple weeks ago, not only has Derek Carr's numbers uh, improved, but Hunter Renfro's numbers improve. You get Darren Waller, you get Foster Morrell. They have a lot of weapons on here. I know Oakland likes to run the ball first and foremost, but I like the matchups this, um, you know, for the rest of the year for the Oakland Raiders. Moving on to defense, I'm not going to do long-term plays because defense is so commoditized. It really depends a lot on matchup. This week, I like the Indianapolis Colts. Yes, I know Jacoby Brissett might be hurt. Uh, is that going to stall some drives and make the Colts stay on the offense, uh, or I'm sorry, on the, the field longer? Possibly, but the matchup against the Dolphins is pretty good. The Dolphins just lost their starting running back to a four-game suspension. All they have left is Bellage. Spoiler alert, he's in my uh, running back selections. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, this is a really nice matchup. The Colts play tough defense. They get to the quarterback, and they first force turnovers. The Steelers, I don't love the matchup against the Rams coming off a of bye week, but again, the Steelers, uh, they sack the quarterback, and they force turnovers. Only owned in 61% of the leagues. That's too, too low. I think they're a top-five defense fantasy-wise uh, season long. So not only for a short-term, but a long-term play as well. The Pittsburgh Steelers make a lot of sense. And then the Lions versus the Bears. We all know that the Bears have been struggling offensively. Um, Mr. Trubisky does not look like the answer there. The Lions defense has, has some issues. Um, in the secondary as well, but I don't know that the Bears can exploit it. So again, I'm just talking more based on matchup here. I like the Lions matchup against the Bears. If you're desperate, um, you know, somebody somebody out there is like that, but I like the Steelers and the Colts more this week. Moving at two tight ends, the, the matchups I like this week, if you're looking for a stream play, Gerald Everett has a really nice matchup against the Steelers. I believe he's projected in the top five for tight ends from my projections this week, ESPNs as well. Um, so uh, there's a lot to like there, I think, with Gerald Everett, only owned in 58 and a half percent of the leagues. Jack Doyle. Now keep in mind, you know, it's not so much about the Dolphins uh, defense here. For me, uh, Jack Doyle, the reason I like him is because the Colts receivers are all banged up. Um, Zach Pascal, I believe, will be the number one receiver. You got, you know, guys like, um, you know, Chester Rogers, I think maybe Deion King, Paris Campbell's out of the game for the, for the, uh, for the Colts. So I think that they're going to be using their tight ends a little bit more and, you know, maybe the running backs a little bit more in the offense, especially if Brissett's hurt. Um, I think Jack Doyle is the most likely beneficiary 
Bakhtiari for that in terms of catches and yardage. Um, only under 35.5% of the league, so I like that there. And then Jason Witten for the Vikings, uh, or I'm sorry, for the Cowboys playing against the Vikings. I just like the matchup here. I think the Vikings will do a pretty decent job locking in on uh, Amari Cooper, maybe Michael Gallup as well. Um, so who does that leave left for Dallas to throw to? I think you can get some yardage and possibly a touchdown in the passing game um, for Jason Witten there. Long-term tight end plays. I um, Darren Fells, he's leading um, all tight ends in touchdown receptions. Still, for some reason, only owned in 34% of the leagues. He should be picked up. Jacob Hollister, I've been talking about um, the last couple of weeks. He did get in the end zone twice against the Tampa Bay Bucks. I don't love the matchup against the 49ers this week, but long-term, I still love this guy. I think everybody should uh, really be keeping an eye on him. Only owned in 0.2% of the leagues. Uh, last week's two-touchdown game, it's not an anomaly. I don't believe it is anyway. Uh, the last one for the long-term play is Chris Herndon. When he finally gets in and healthy, uh, Ryan Griffin's been doing pretty well in this offense for the Jets. I think Herndon will do even better. Um, so just pay attention to him long-term. Obviously, you don't want to stash him if he continues to be injured and not in the game, but uh, he's somebody you should be looking at for uh, for the long-term there. Uh, for the wide receivers this week, stream plays. Um you know, I'll be honest with you. These are a lot of tough matchups for me. I like Pascal just because um, he's going to be in the lineup. Regardless if if Brissett or Hoyer is throwing the ball, I think Pascal will get enough catches and yards to warrant to start there. Only owned in 6.8% of the leagues. Cole Beasley has uh, started to come along. Buffalo's using him a little bit more. I think Josh Allen and he are starting to find a little bit more chemistry. He's found the end zone, I believe, two weeks in a row. Um, playing against the Browns, I like this matchup for him. Only owned in 26.4% of the leagues, so I like him as a stream play. And then Devontae Parker, also in from this Colts and Dolphins game. Uh, Preston Williams out for the season. Uh, Devontae Parker has been playing okay. I think he's going to even go up a little bit more because Ryan Fitzpatrick has to throw to somebody. And at this point, it's like Jakeem Grant, maybe Albert Wilson, if he's even still on the roster. He's been MIA for so long, honestly, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Mike Kosicki, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just not a lot there. So I think the Dolphins will involved Devontae Parker early and often in this game. For uh, long-term plays at wide receiver, I like, still like Marquise Brown. Um, he came back against the Patriots, didn't have a great game, but we weren't anticipating him to have a good game. Gilmore's locked up on him. He's a really good cornerback for New England. I think Brown is going to start to emerge again, re-emerge. Only owned in 61.4% of the leagues. He's electric. He's, uh, he's super fast. Lamar Jackson likes to throw to him deep. Keep an eye out for him. Hunter Renfro only owned in 2.7% of the leagues. I talked a little bit earlier about how when Tyrell Williams is in the lineup, it helps everybody on this Raiders team. Hunter Renfro has been kind of coming on the last couple of weeks here, so I like him as a long-term play. And Mohamed Sanu had a ton of targets, a ton of catches last week against uh, Baltimore. This is That was only his second game with the Patriots. Now he's going to be on a bye week this week. He's going to come back in week 11, um, even more integrated into this offense. I like it quite a bit. Mohamed Sanu only owned in 57.4% of the leagues. He was playing for well for Atlanta before he got traded, so he's having a really nice season, and I think he'll do better for the um, for the uh, the Patriots moving forward. Uh, let's move it forward to the running backs. Uh, week 10 stream plays again. It's kind of thin pickings at running back as it usually is, but I do think there is some value, especially in Devin Singletary, who it, it's incredible to me that he's only owned in 66% of the leagues. He is uh, he ascended. He finally got um, some touches, uh, and the Bills were rewarded. Um, he produces every time he gets the ball, it seems like. So I like him quite a bit. He's gone in my league, but if he's available in your league, you should pick him up. Uh, Kalen Ballage um, against the Colts. I don't love the matchup, um, but he is the primary ball carrier um, at this point with uh, Walton out and suspended. And then you got Ronald Jones, uh, who is named basically the starting running back. It's about time, I think. He still is a little bit... Um, uh, lacking, I would say, in pass blocking, but they have another guy there in Tampa that can uh, play in third downs. Uh, going against uh, Bruce Arians, going against his former team, I just think that maybe Ronald Jones can find some juice. It's a risky play for me, but again, if you're looking for a stream, he's about as good as you're going to be able to do this week. 38.1% owned in leagues. And lastly, for my long-term plays, uh, Devin Singletary, again, you should be picking him up. Uh, Darius Geis, 32.8% owned. Uh, I know the Redskins are on bye week this week, but Geis should be activated for week 11. He's back at practice from what I understand. Uh, he will be the primary ball carrier. Callahan wants to run the ball in Washington. 
Uh, Adrian Peterson has had some nice games, but I think it's time for Darius Geis to move forward. I like him. And then J.D. McKissick, um, again, I don't like the matchup against the Bears defense this week, but I think he is the best of the the Lions running backs, the healthy ones. (laughs) So I think you could pick him up, only owned him 5.9% of leagues. So there you go. There are your three stream plays and three long-term plays for uh, for every position outside of, uh, I guess, kicker and, uh, and defense. Please, once again, like and subscribe. Uh, please check back. We're going to have uh, our game previews drop starting on Wednesday and our deep dives starting maybe on Wednesday night into Thursday. So we got a lot more coming in for Fantasy Football Week 10. Check out our Fantasy Football Week 10 playlist because we got you primed. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on another episode soon. Thanks, everyone.